I want to today revise that we live in a world of noise and there is too much noise the noise of thoughts, judgments, opinions, labels um, and they keep coming from so many sources and then whether we like it or not, want it or not, since we are pretty body conscious and that body consciousness of 63 births is quite intense. So those messages that come from the world outside, they influence us messages about ourselves, messages about the world, messages about the future. And then there is the messages from the not so whole subconscious. So, you know, we have sanskars and so many things in our buddhi which is not pure. And then those uh, those thoughts, those internal uh, ruminations that go on on the basis of that which is old within me also starts to work with the negative messages of the world. And it is very important that we take a step back from all of this and you cannot take a step back by physically taking a step back because there is no physical realm which is not like what's in and around you. Even if you go for a holiday, you have to deal with the person who will carry your bags or the person who will check you in in a hotel or the person who will uh, take care of your uh, laundry there or other stuff. and it's the same thing it's always the same thing uh, you know that same uh, noise that same uh, collision that same other stuff starts there also so it's important that and it's very important that we take these breaks within the day many times where we just step back from the noise and go into that space where you are with Baba and Baba is truth, Baba is love, Baba is purity and just get in touch with the truth because Baba is telling you who you truly are or what the future truly is or what's really going to happen or what really was. And then Baba is also telling us about our true value and worth. And there is no judgment, there is acceptance, there is this unconditional flow of love from Baba. And it's very important that we connect with Baba in this internal space and we get in touch with um, with what is really true because if we don't do that then what is false is meant to influence us if we don't take these breaks and you know even this um, so I've seen some people who are workaholics you know, not even vicious. So not even, they are not interested in the internet or this or that. But you know, if you don't even take a break and go within from that building, um, you know, that building intensity of I have to do this and I have to do that and that has to be finished and this has to be submitted. 
if you don't take a step back from that also then it starts changing into anxiety so we have to understand that the world around us is imperfect in many ways and there are many vibrations which are not in consonance with with the harmonious nature of our original state so our original state is very sweet and harmonious but there is a lot of disharmonious vibration outside and that disharmonious or you know imbalanced state of the world today or chaotic state kind of pulls you into it because it's a world of extremes always you know extreme work extreme pleasure extreme relaxation extreme indulgence in sensual pleasures it's always extreme and when you when you do not make a conscious choice to move away in your awareness from this extreme and make a choice to connect with that harmonious being and you know that and in order to connect with that harmonious being you have to make contact with baba because baba is the ocean of all that is harmonious and um and baba gives you the ingredients that restore you to your harmonious self so getting in touch with the truth that baba is or the love that baba sends me or the peace that um baba is uh, sending to me is very important and if we don't take that step back and just don't get in touch with baba and restore ourselves to who we are then it's not going to be sustainable for very long and it's and and what i have understood is everything else that we do is ego based you know either it is so when we work in the world it's all ego based and if you don't connect with baba off and on then it cannot be so work cannot be done as a karam yogi so you will do it in a ego based fashion that's how it is you will either do it for sensual pleasure or you will do it for approval and appreciation or you will do it for you know that um, that uh, you will be driven by your sanskars that tell you oh you did a very good job and then you feel the surge within you because that ego is boosting or giving you the approval that what you did was good and then this is an this is never ending because the drama is such that your ego can not always be fed so you uh, the senses cannot be satisfied for longer than they can be so you know you see something you hear something uh, it gives you temporary satisfaction for some time but then it cannot be sustained because that's not the nature of sensual satisfaction or even for approval and appreciation even if you do everything right i don't know if somebody has the capacity to approve and appreciate you all the time or if even you know the the elements of nature have the capacity to work with you in a perfect way all the time so you know even if you replicate the same recipe five times you will get it wrong one time <laughs> so you are the same you and the things are the same things but then you will not get it right every time so it's it's not possible to uh, to live in this ego driven fashion because our ego is not going to support us all the time and it it cannot that's the thing so it's very it's very very necessary that 
we work inside out. It cannot be outside in anymore. You cannot take the assurance of who you are from what you do and what you have because that's not happening. So we have to work inside out and for that we have to get in touch with who we are and for that I have to get in touch with that one who knows me as I am. And that one who behaves and talks and speaks to me like I am. And that is very important. And I don't know if uh, all of you are taking the time and the, making the effort to step back and reconnect with Baba many times a day. And if you don't do that, then... I don't think whether I, I will I think that you will reach a burnout after some time. Even if it's just pleasure one is engaging it, I have seen people burning out with pleasure also. <laughs> so there's a pleasure burnout also. So you know there is no place will excite you, no thing will excite you, no game, no show will excite you anymore. It's a pleasure burnout and burnout can be reached in many ways and we will reach that place if we don't follow this one thing and in order to step back and feel Baba's presence and feel his love and get in touch with his truth, we have to know Baba and there has to be a very good relationship with Baba. So, and today in the Murli, Baba says something very beautiful. Baba today says, only Shiv Baba grants everyone salvation. You cannot take a photograph of him. He can only be seen on a divine vision. However, he can be known and it's very interesting that in all of eternity, it is at this point of time that we really have access to Baba and we have the opportunity to know Baba. And I, I thought about this thing today, how do I know Baba better? Because you know, um, there is this one example that we give in the initial classes, which is when a battery is discharged, you connect it to the powerhouse. Yes, so you connect it. Now, how do you connect to the powerhouse? If you need to know the powerhouse very well in order to connect and you need to know how to connect with the powerhouse. But, but it is interesting that until Baba came, we did not have access to any information about him, let alone him. We did not even have access to any information about him. So how he looks, how he is, what he does, what are his qualities. We had absolutely no information about him. And here he is sitting and living with us. So, you know, every day in the Murli, he is being himself and giving us company. He's actually speaking to us and the Murli is such a good opportunity to know Baba. And you know, uh, there is this sister, she's a psychiatrist and uh, I was talking to her and I told her, so when a patient comes to you, how do you uh, know them? So how do you know what they're going through or how do you figure out where they are at? 
and she said we conduct some tests so i said what kind of tests so she said i we asked them to fill out some you know some questionnaires or something or something and then that um, gives us a window into who they are so i said i told her that so by what they tell you or write do you figure out who they are so she said yes so i said it's so interesting that god writes to us every day and you can really figure out who he is if you intently listen to him and see him through what he is putting out for us so baba's whole personality is reflected in the murli so you can actually meet baba through the murli all facets of his personality and we have access to the murli which is which is the mind of god if uh, or the buddhi of god or the sanskar of god it is a product of that supreme souls uh, you know mind buddhi and sanskar and baba says you can know me through the murli and we really have to um, listen to the murli with a lot of love and a lot of surrender if i really want to know baba and i want to know um and when i know baba i know myself because knowing your parent is uh knowing yourself because you are just like your parent and then there is another beautiful way to know baba more and more which is spending time with baba so spending time with baba as you know him through the murli so when you when you step back and you spend time with baba that relationship with baba grows and that relationship and the nourishment that you receive from that relationship also grows so whenever we are in a relationship with baba it's a very healing recharging and nourishing relationship so when i step back and go into that internal cave and sit with baba as i know him through the murli and see myself as he sees him and talks to me in the murli as he sees me and talks to me in the murli then i am nourished by that company and i start getting closer to my truth and my peace and my state of love and my state of power and this is the work of restoration that baba is doing and baba is called the restorer of conscience and when my conscience is restored to its original whole powerful self then i don't think that i will need anything else i can really work inside out so my conscience will give me the guidance the power the capacity the skill everything to work in the outside world but the restorer of conscience is baba and i have to take a step back and and relish or cherish this relationship with baba time and again and it's very very important and um and there is this practice of traffic control and i don't know whether you do it or not and if you are not in the habit of doing it do it start doing it so there are apps also these days which which will help you to um, practice traffic control and they go off at the right time and then you can and you know sometimes we don't know how to use the traffic control brakes 
So uh, the traffic control break is not just to assess what you did wrong in the last hour. So yes, in the traffic control break, you look at the last hour that's there. We do that and we check, but then we also correct. So it's not just going over your mistakes. It's also reinforcing yourself so that you correct yourself. So I check and then I get in touch with who I am and I get in touch with Baba and I come back to a place where I can do better in the next hour. So I have to take this energy which is, which is powerful so that I can correct myself. And Baba talks about correction today. Baba says, the father tells you how to make effort in order to create your fortune. So what would your condition be if you don't listen to what such a father tells you? The father has mercy and he therefore says, continue to correct yourself. So, and for correcting ourselves, we need the corrective force. We cannot correct ourselves because we want to correct ourselves. You know, you need that corrective force. You need Baba. And you want to correct yourself, you have to invoke Baba into your heart. And take that uh, and in that relationship with Baba, nurture yourself every now and then. And so we have to live in this world, but the foundation of our life in this world has to be our relationship with Baba and the nourishment we get from Baba. So we have to pay a lot of attention to this. And, um, and then there is this Srimad that Baba says, gives is, while living at home with your families, use your intellects to understand that everyone is to be destroyed. Mine is one Shiv Baba alone. So when you are with everyone and everything, you should know that Tomorrow, they are not going to be there for you. That tomorrow could be tomorrow, that tomorrow could be day after tomorrow, that, could, that tomorrow could be five years later, but there will be a tomorrow when they will not be there for you. And so that you don't curse them that day for not being there. And so that you can bless them in their onward journey. You have to move with the intellect. So, you know, every day you should, you should go by what you know and not by what you see or what you feel or how emotional you feel or how happy you feel. Just use your buddhi and understand that all my all my feelings have to come from Baba, my happiness, my peace, my feeling of being loved or my feeling of being full or full of attainments has to come from Baba so that, and when you keep this in your buddhi that everyone and everything is to be destroyed and I do not have to regret losing anyone or anything at that point. I have to be who I am even when everyone and everything goes because they, they are meant to go. That's how they are destined. So build this relationship with Baba, keeping that in your buddhi. Because, you know, Maya, Maya has many ways of working. So one of the ways is, um, you know, it makes you feel I don't have enough and I am unfortunate. But then there is another big weapon of Maya is when you, when Maya convinces you that you don't even need God. 
So you have so many people and so many things and so much in your possessions that you don't need God. And then Maya deceives you like that. So Baba says, even if you have everything, just know that it's impermanent. And build that relationship with Baba through that knowing. So is your knowing more powerful than your seeing and your hearing and your feeling? So if you use your buddhi more than your senses, then your knowing will be stronger than your <laughs> seeing and uh, feeling and hearing and smelling and sensual pleasure. So you have to operate with the buddhi always. So don't see when you see. Think what am I seeing and what does it really mean? Use that filter of knowledge always. See in awareness, hear in awareness, you know, do everything consciously and then your knowing will be more powerful than the pull of your senses. And then Baba says, know this, that they are all temporary and mine is one Shiv Baba alone. Would you ever turn the beads of the rosary of your father? Baba says, Mala japoge kya apne pita ki? So do you buy a rosary and then, you know, my father, my father, do you do that? No, you remember your parents differently. Yes, so Baba says, for that, so Baba says, I remind you children to remember me. Just like you remember your parents, not like you remembered God in Bhakti. So you remember me just like you remember your parents for whom you don't have to turn the beads of the rosary. So Baba says, I remind you children to remember me so that you will receive a lot of power and your sins will be absolved and you will become powerful. So. It is remembrance that drains us. It is remembrance that is capable of empowering us. So remembrance is such a big tool. You remember and you know in my early classes I used to give this example. Just remember somebody you don't like and you can instantly see the expression on the face change. Remembrance is so powerful, it drains you instantly in a second. And then remembrance can also nourish you in a second. So Baba says, that's why I'm asking you to remember me because if you keep remembering me, it will keep adding to your internal power. And you will become powerful. And Baba says, this Lakshmi and Narayan are powerful. And that's true power, that internal power when you have, when you operate inside out and your inside is powerful enough to, to actually reign over the outside completely. That's the stage of Sri Lakshmi Narayan. Those who are powerful receive the kingdom. And then Baba says, Baba relates his own example. I adopted 12 gurus. And one of the gurus said, wake up early in the morning and turn the beads of a rosary thousand times. I said to him, so look what Brahma Baba said. He said, give me another time to do this. Not early in the morning. Okay. So Brahma Baba said, to the Guru that give me another time to turn the beads of the rosary. I would become tired during the day in business, etc. In the same way, you also tell Baba that you were unable to wake up early in the morning. Yes, and then what does Baba says? Baba says, don't say you are unable to remain pure or unable to stay in remembrance. If you don't have remembrance, how would your sins be absolved? 
So Baba says, there is no other way. So don't ever tell yourself in your privacy or out loud that you cannot stay pure or cannot remember Baba. If you say that, you will never be able to become pure or absolve yourself from your sins. So Baba says, never say, I can't do something for which there is no alternative. So you have to prepare yourself to be pure and wake up in the morning and accumulate the power of remembrance. And Baba says, you definitely do have to become Sato Pradhan from Tamo Pradhan. This is the last birth. So you definitely have to become pure. If you don't follow the Father Srimad, what status will you claim? You have been calling out to me to, for half the cycle. I am now telling you to become pure and to remember me. Continue to show the path to others and also give them the message that the father says man mana bhav. So Baba says you have to remember Baba, you have to be pure and you have to be a messenger of God. There is no other option. So never say I can't. Because if you can't, then Baba will say I also can't. Because Baba only has this formula. Okay, and then today Baba says that here you have come to study and to have a trade. So this is a place where there is a study, there is a trade. And Baba says, what is the study about? So Baba says, I am teaching you four subjects knowledge, remembrance, purity and seva. And this study, just like you know, when you go to a school or a college, you study some subjects and you get a degree and you become someone. You become a doctor or an engineer. If you study this study with these four subjects, you will to tomorrow become the king of the world. Okay, so Baba says, it is as simple as that. You always become someone by studying. But in this whole world, there is no other study which can make you the emperor of heaven. I am giving you that course. Now, you have to stick to the four subjects and this knowledge will make you the ruler tomorrow. And then Baba says, there is a business also because until you give all the old stuff that you have, I cannot give you the new that I am going to give you. So there is a trade. So you have to invest your old body, old mind and your old wealth. And only then can I give you a new body, new mind and new wealth. So we have, to, we have to study and then we have to also do the trade because, you know, if you just keep studying but you don't do the exchange, then Baba cannot give you that which is new. If you keep investing your money in your vicious activities like you earlier did or under the influence of the five vices like you earlier did, and do not use it for spiritual seva. Baba cannot give you the benefit of that money. If you keep using your mind to create the same thoughts that you did earlier and don't surrender your mind to Baba and don't start thinking the thoughts that Baba has given you to think, then Baba cannot give you a powerful mind. If you keep using your body for lust and ego-based and anger-based activities like you did earlier and do not use your body to do spiritual seva, then 
Baba cannot give you a healthy body. So Baba says, you have to study. You, the study tells you how to exchange and then you also have to exchange. That's very important. And then Baba today says, and we, uh, you will get wealth because of the knowledge. You will exchange everything and get everything new because of the exchange. And the third thing that Baba says today is, you will get health, you will be ever healthy through this yoga. So if you burn your sins by remembering Baba, then you will become ever healthy in Satyuk. So Baba is going to give you health, wealth and happiness, but only if you uh, take care of the formula. Because if you don't do the things as Baba says, Baba will be unable to give you what he has come to give you. So this is something. And then Baba today says in the slogan, those who ask for something can never have a full treasure of happiness. So Baba says beggars cannot be choosers. So, you know, if we are constantly begging, I want this, I want this, I want this. If you are in that state, then you have given away your power to say, I am happy to that object or whatever you say you want. Because when you say, I want something, it means I want something so that I can be happy. Yes, there is no other reason why you want it. So, okay, so it's always like, I want something so that I can be happy. Now, if you have already programmed yourself that your happiness is decided by whether you get it or not get it, then you have given away your right to be happy come what may. So if you speak this language of I want, then you cannot have a full treasure of happiness. Because that object or that attainment or that accomplishment that you say I want has been given that power to make you happy or take away that happiness from you. So never speak this language I want. Yes. So I want nothing because happiness is my choice. Okay, so there is nothing that I want to in order to be happy. And just think about why you would want anything if you are happy. So it is always like when you say I want something, the internal programming is I want it so that I can be happy. And if you make your happiness so conditional, then obviously that thing or that attainment, only when they give you the permission to be happy, you will be happy. So I want nothing, I am happy. And then just look at how much the drama will give you for seva. Because the drama wants someone. So you know, Everybody wants a trustee who can multiply what they have. And the drama also wants trustees. The drama wants those who don't want anything. And everything flows from the drama to those who don't want anything. So that they can make it better. Okay, so when you become an instrument who doesn't want anything, then the drama offers you many things so that you can make them better. 
So you will have many souls, many things, many positions, many powers so that you can use them to make the world better. So never say that I want something and then you will have a treasure full of happiness and the drama will also give you an opportunity to do that karma <coughs> which will fill that treasure store of happiness because happiness is the product of good karma. Okay, Om Shanti. <coughs>